This is Tristan with Victress Games. Hello, and welcome back to our series on how to make a game with the GDevelop open source game engine. In this video, we will add a start and finish line, and then add a timer so we can track how long it takes the player to finish the level. All right, let's get started. I'm going to be creating a new object, a tiled sprite object. We'll call this a finish line, and we're going to create this from scratch. Let's make it 64 by 64. And we'll do a rectangle tool. We'll change our pen size to one. If you look on the bottom right, it tells you the position of your mouse. So I want to go to 3232. 3232, and I'm gonna do the, another square here. Now I'm going to paint the insides of those. I'm going to paint the other sides white. Now we got a checkered finish line. We can even name this. Okay, let's see what this finish line looks like. If this was a sprite and I stretched like this, it would look exactly the same as this, only bigger and blurrier. Tile sprites are really cool because you can just expand it and it'll repeat the object. Because this is the finish line, we need to stick it at the very top. As we talked before, really long levels, it's hard to move things. I mean, you could do it, but I like to do things faster. So if I just click on the ground object, I know it's Y and it's X, especially need this Y value. So I'm gonna copy this, click on our finish line, and I'm gonna paste that. So it disappeared. If you lost something, you don't know where it is, go to this instances list. The instances list will help you find these things. There it is. We have one instance of the finish line. You can see its Y value here, but I'm just gonna click on it. And you can see that it centered it on our screen. If I move it up a little bit, it does overlap the ground object a little bit because they share the same origin, this top left. I'm gonna make it a tiny bit bigger so that the player can land on it. I also thought it'd be good to have a starting line. Let's click on our player. And let's just put a starting line here. I'm going to use these objects not just for a graphical representation of start and finish, but also for events using collisions. So I'm going to create a new object. I'm going to duplicate and just rename it. And so now we have a starting line. I'll even put the word start above it. If we add new objects and choose text, I'm going to make it the same color as the obstacle. So we'll drag our text over here. It's way too small. Double click on it. So that's size 20. Let's try size 200 and make it bold. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Okay. Let's play this game and see what this looks like. We have a Z value problem. We went underneath it. Let's make our player be on top of everything. We'll just make it Z order of 100. All right, we made it to the end. Okay, now that we've got our start and finish line, how do we keep track of how much time it takes the player to go between them? GDevelop has built-in timers that can do this for us. Let's create a new event group. We have to decide when we will start the timer. Let's start it when the player touches the starting line. So we'll choose our player and we'll use collision the non-physics collision. And the collision will be with the starting line. And we'll do a trigger once because we only need to know when they touch it the first time. And for our action, we will start a timer. Start or reset a scene timer. We'll call it race timer. It's important to use quotations when GDevelop is expecting a string. If you don't have quotations, it'll remind you with this red text. 
Okay, so this is how we're starting the timer. How are we gonna finish it? I'll just copy and paste this event because it's almost the same. So instead of being in collision with the starting line, we wanna know when it crosses the finish line. And instead of starting the timer, we will pause it. Okay, this should start and stop the timer, but how do we actually see what the timer is? Let's create a new text object that will show this value. Add a new object, a text object, race timer, and I always like to put in placeholder text that will look kind of what we're expecting. Something like this. Let's make it a little bigger and bold and we'll pull it over here. Now we need to make an event that will update this text with the value of our timer. Let's create a new event. We'll add no conditions because we want to update the timer every frame. On our action, let's select that text object and we'll use modify the text. We will set the text to the value of the timer. The value of the timer is a number, so we're gonna to need to convert it using the to string function. And for our number, we'll use the timer elapsed time, and the string is the name of the timer. Our timer is called race timer, and then we need to close our parentheses, which is the end of this to string function. Okay, now it's happy. Let's see what this looks like. We'll put this text object on the UI layer so it doesn't move. Well, the placeholder text went away. It's showing zero. That's a good sign that it's working. Let's see what happens when I cross this line. Okay, so it definitely is working. However, it's got such high precision, way more precision than we want. So how can we convert this to something more readable? The simplest thing to do would be to round it to the nearest second. So we can use a function called round This round function will take whatever is inside it, which is currently the value of the timer, and it'll just round it up or down to the nearest second. Okay, that works really well. However, I think I want a little more precision in case we want to have a leaderboard and we want to know who has the highest score to the nearest tenth of a second. There's a couple ways to do this. First, I'll show you the manual method. If we were to take our timer value and then times that by 10, then perform the round function, and after rounding, then divide by 10. This will show us the tenths of a second. So this looks really good, except for one thing. Do you notice when it goes to whole numbers, it does not show the zero. The way to fix that is to use a special function called toFixed. Let's get that installed. The function we're looking for is inside an extension called Extended Math Support. We will install this. And now we'll have access to the new function. One quick tip I'll give you when editing events in GDevelop if you're going to make a change that could break things, make a copy of the event, disable the good copy, and then you can change the other one without worrying about losing your working event. So to use the to fix extension, we can start typing it. And it found it for us. It converts a number to a string with a specified number of decimal places. So we will click on that. Now it wants our number. Let's put in the timer. And it also wants to know how many decimal points we want. I just want one. Let's see what this looks like. Our timer's working perfectly. Let's clean things up real fast. We'll delete this event we don't need anymore. I'm gonna make this look a little nicer. Let's add some effects to these text objects. 
I love to use the outline effect. And the drop shadow effect also looks really good with text. I think that makes it really pop. Let's add the glow effect to these buttons to make them stick out a little more. Okay, those look really nice. That's all the time we have for this video, pun intended. But in the next video, we're actually gonna do a few more UI elements. We're going to make a speedometer that shows how fast we're going, as well as a progress tracker so players can see how far along they are in the level and how far they are to the end. I think it's gonna look really great. If you're finding these videos useful, be sure to like and subscribe. In addition to helping you be notified of my new videos, this will also help other people find these videos easier on YouTube. If you want to see what other projects I'm working on, you can follow me at Victorus Games on Twitter, and you're also welcome to join our Discord server. I'll see you in the next video.